Building a house extension is one of the biggest projects you can do, so to make sure your project is a complete success, we have come up with a homeowner's guide to building a great house extension. Our easy to follow guide has 31 steps and is packed with lots of essential tips and guidance to ensure your build runs smoothly and creates desirable living space that all the family can enjoy. Step number one, work out what you want to achieve. This is the time where you have a good hard look at your home and make determinations as to what your needs are. For example, if you are building a single story house extension, you may like the idea of a downstairs loo, a downstairs shower or bathroom, a utility slash laundry room, or even a larder. All of these elements are very popular with our clients, but in most cases there isn't enough space for all of them. So you do in effect have to work out priorities and what is most important to you. Your designer will be able to help you work out what is possible for your particular property. Number two, find a professional designer to create your design plans. Working with a professional designer will get you the best possible outcome for your project. In most cases, there will be various options to consider and a skilled designer will be able to explain the pros and cons of each option and help you to reach a conclusion on what is the best layout for your property. A creative designer will also be able to show you how to reduce costs, add the most value to your property and guide you through the woes of planning. Number three, create a mood board. Mood boards are an essential part of the design process. Before you start looking at styling and designing your own home, it's important to define your own style. Do you know what you do and don't like? You might be able to think of a few things that you do and don't like, but can you picture them collectively and visualize the common thread that runs through them? A mood board definition is a visual tool that communicates our concepts and visual ideas. It is a well thought out and planned arrangement of images, materials, pieces of text that is intended to evoke or project a particular style or concept. You will use the mood board as part of the design brief to your designer to visually express the vision you have in mind for the project. Number four, establish a budget for your project. Now would be a good time to establish a budget for the project. Your designer will give you a rough cost, but all the decisions are yours with regard to the quality of the build and how much you are prepared to spend on fitting out. The kitchen will be a big ticket item as the average spend will be 13k to 20k, but a good designer can show you how to cut that cost by half and still give you quartz worktops and high-end appliances. If you need to reduce costs, the designer will be the best person to show you how to get more value for your money. Number five, submit the planning application. The planning application is not just about completing a few forms and pressing the submit button. At Draw Plans, we process about 50 planning applications each month. And if we didn't monitor or liaise with the appointed planning officers, most of these applications would fail. In most cases, we have to negotiate, amend plans, and deal with complaints from neighbors opposed to your build. So unless you really know what you're doing, I strongly recommend that you leave the planning application to your designer. If your project doesn't need a planning application, then consider uh, obtaining a certificate of lawful development, because if you go to sell your property, um, having built an extension without a planning application, you will find that you will be required to produce a certificate of lawful development. So we strongly recommend you do one or the other. Number six, deal with party wall issues. A party wall is a dividing wall between two adjoining properties that is shared by the occupants of each residence or business. Typically, the builder lays the wall along a property line dividing two terraced houses so that one half of the wall's thickness lies on each side. This type of wall is usually structural. Under the party wall legislation, if you wish to carry out alterations to a party wall, like taking out a chimney stack, or wish to excavate for new foundations within three meters of an existing party wall, then you will need a party wall agreement with your neighbor. 
Number seven, building regulation plans for building control. Building plans for your extension will be required by the builders and building control. They detail how you are going to build and let the builder know the technical specification for elements such as foundations, walls, floors, roof, doors, windows and drainage. They will also provide all the information to ensure that the build is done under the current building regulations. Number 8. Structural Design and Calculations All house extensions require a structural design plan along with loading calculations for foundations, roof, door and window openings along with any structural alterations to the existing property. Number 9. Decide your build route. When it comes to getting your extension built, there are two main build routes. Option 1 is to give the whole job to one builder, which means you only have to deal with one company. Option 2 is where you break down the job and hire different contractors and service providers for different parts of the job and the scheduling will be down to you. Option 2 usually takes twice the amount of time to complete the work. Um, then option one, but you can save up to 20 or 30 percent on the bill cost. Number 10. Time to get quotes. This is where the project gets exciting, as you start to find out the reality of how difficult the tendering process is. Get at least three quotes for everything, and keep in mind that the quotes can vary by as much as 100 percent. Number 11. Choose your builder or service provider. Now comes the hard part. You know what you're doing, you know how much it costs, so you need to instruct your builder or service providers. The key point here is called due diligence. In other words, once you decide who to instruct, make sure you do some research online about the person and the business. Check social media accounts and also check out the address to see what comes back. Uh, specifically look for negative reviews on the business and make sure you read through existing reviews before you instruct. When you are ready to instruct, complete a service contract. Uh, you can download online uh, free templates and the service contract will deal with issues such as start and finish dates, deposits, invoicing and payments, warranty. Having that all signed up at the start will help to ensure you get a better job because everyone knows where they stand right from the start. Number 12. Groundworks. Stripping out plus excavations. The day you've been waiting for has finally arrived. Hopefully you got in plenty of tea bags and biscuits and cleared away any expensive items out of harm's way. Groundworks is where a lot of progress is made in a very short time. Most of the stripping out works get done, removal of the patio and any outbuildings, and the excavations for the foundations get on the way. Once the excavations are complete, building control will need to visit and approve before moving to the next stage. Number 13. Foundations. Once building control have approved the digging out, you are ready to pour the concrete foundations. This work is done by mixing up the concrete on site or using a ready-mix concrete service where the concrete is either pumped or wheelbarrowed into the trench. The ready-mix concrete option saves a lot of time and if the concrete is pumped you should have your foundations in as little as two hours. Number 14. Walls to roof level. Now that the foundations are in, the bricklayers can get ahead with the walls. You will have already decided if you're going with a brick face for the walls or a block cavity wall, which gets rendered externally. Block walls go up quicker and work out cheaper than bricks, but if you do prefer a brick finish, then only use brick for the extension walls that you're going to see when the extension is built. Number 15. Structural alterations. The structural alterations are the most dangerous part of the work because the house has to be supported when opening up load-bearing walls to create that open plan look or to insert doors or windows. Steel beams and supports will be installed as per the structural design and all this work has to be approved by building control before it is covered up. Number 16. Drainage. 
This is another tough part of the job because it usually means lots of careful digging to find pipe runs to connect into. In some cases it means that manholes have to be moved and new rainwater gullies and inspection chambers installed. In, again, in some cases, rainwater from new extensions uh, now have to be directed to a new soakaway further down the garden rather than directed into the main sewer. All this work has to be done to the approval of building control. Number 17, roof to completion. New extension roofs tend to be flat, mainly because a pitched roof is unsuitable for larger extensions because the roof pitch angle would be too low. Another popular option would be the pitched gable roof. For straightforward flat roofs we generally recommend EPDM rubber because it is easy and quick to install and will last for 25-35 years. Because it is one large sheet of rubber it is virtually immune from leaks. EPDM has been used uh, in America for large factory roofs. It's, it started out as a commercial product and is now uh, in common use throughout the UK on residential properties. Number 18. Fascia boards and soffits. Often overlooked, the fascia boards and soffits can make a huge contribution to the exterior design of your extension. A modern contemporary style extension with large aluminium or UPVC fascia boards generally look best with a flat roof extension. If the doors to the new extension are finished in anthracite grey we generally recommend the same colour for the fascia boards and soffits. Number 19 Doors and Windows Almost all of the extensions we create plans for include a large opening to the patio with aluminium sliding or bifold doors. We generally advise our clients to source the exterior doors and windows themselves rather than including the work within the builder's schedule. Full height floor to ceiling doors generally look best but if you have tall ceilings consider adding a fan light above the doors. Number 20. Plumbing and Heating when it comes to the plumbing and heating, now is the time to determine what upgrades you need. If you're adding an extra bathroom or shower, consider the extra demands on the boiler. The same for heating, as your boiler will now have a bit more work to do. In many cases, when we create plans for an extension, the boiler gets updated or moved to accommodate new layouts. If you are creating an extension with a modern open plan layout, then consider creating a wet underfloor heating zone. It costs a bit more than a few extra radiators, but if you like the look, then go for it. Number 21. Electrical and lights. Electrical and lights are another area that tends to be overlooked by homeowners. It's obvious a few more sockets and lights will be required for the extension, but as designers we can't really pass up the opportunity to let people know about the advancement in home automation technology, the likes of Ring and Nest, etc. We also remind our clients about installing an electric car charging point and specialist lighting which can have a huge impact on the interior design of the property. Number 22, the kitchen. The kitchen is one of the most talked about elements within any extension project. Most homeowners blindly accept that they will pay 15 to 20k for their new kitchen until we show them how to cut the cost by half and get a better overall kitchen design at the end of the day. Our advice is to focus on the worktops and appliances because that is all your visitors will ever see. However, if you have a really big budget, just forget I said that and I will send you to Germany for the weekend to choose your new kitchen. Number 23. Plastering, dry lining and rendering. Plastering out the property after weeks of ripping it apart will have a huge impact because now you really will be able to visualize your new home. New walls are generally done with dot and dab plasterboard and we generally recommend that you have all the ceilings and walls to the effective rooms skimmed out so that everything looks new. On the outside any block work will need to be rendered to finish off the walls. Number 24. Joinery and Carpentry. When it comes to finishing off the joinery, the carpenters won't have too much to do at this point. 
Once the door linings, doors, locks, architrave and skirting is fitted, um, they'll be all done. That's it. Number 25, painting and decorating. We always put in a provisional amount in the budget to cover the cost of painting and decorating. But we also use this item as contingency for other additional expenses en route and the reason for that is if the budget runs out then the painting and decorating can always be left to do at a later date when more funds become available. We also get clients that decide to do the painting themselves which means the painting budget can go to something else. Don't forget that there will be a bit of painting to the new rendering and the outside of the extension and if there are existing painted areas they will need to get painted also. Number 26. Finished flooring. Flooring is not a big ticket item depending on the size of your extension. In many cases the back half of the house will also require new flooring and possibly the entrance hall to give a sense of continuity. The most popular choice of finished floor chosen by our clients over the last few years is engineered flooring. Draw plans have trade accounts with the largest flooring companies in the UK and we get discounts of up to 65% on the most popular engineered floors. Number 27 patio and landscaping. When it comes to the patio we always look to create a new patio at the same height as the existing interior floor. That way when the doors are opened up the patio will make the space look even bigger. It's also a good idea to set a little budget aside for re-turfing, repairing or replacing fences and to generally give the garden a decent makeover. Number 28. This means you've made it. You've made it to the end so hopefully you're now motivated to get your extension on the way as soon as possible. It's not rocket science but it can be a daunting and challenging experience to build an extension so the more prepared you are the easier it will be to manage your project. It is my sincere wish that you found our guide helpful and that you use it to navigate your way to creating a stress-free extension that all the family can enjoy for many years. To help me to create more home improvement videos like this one, it would be helpful if you hit the like and subscribe button so that you can get notified when we add more videos. Stay safe, see you in the next video.